Inside Press Box is presented by Friedmont Mortgage. Don't make a 30-year mistake by choosing the wrong lender. Go to Friedmont.com now for all of your mortgage needs. And welcome to another edition of Inside Press Box. I'm your host, Stan the Fan Charles. Well, we've had almost a week to digest the Ravens' 23-20 loss to the Patriots in the AFC Championship game, but it takes much longer than a week to mend a broken heart. This week on the show, we'll hear how Baltimore fans are feeling after the loss, and I'll discuss the game and more with the guys of the Coach's Buzz radio show on ESPN 1300. But first, the Ravens may not be heading to Indianapolis this year, but my first guest will be clocking in for his eighth consecutive trip to the big game. Sportscaster Gary Stein is with me right now. And Gary Stein, we thank you for coming in. And Thanks this for is having me. This is your eighth consecutive Super Bowl, and we'll talk about that in a second. But including the five others you went to as a fan, this is your 13th overall Super Bowl you'll be at. Yeah, I, you know, br uh, brought up in Florida, and the game used to be in Miami a lot at the, at, at, you know, at the old Orange Bowl. So uh, when I was a kid, I went to both Steeler Cowboy games back in the 70s. I traveled to see the Dolphins play the Redskins and the 49ers in California, and I saw the Bengals and the 49ers. That was the uh, jo um, Joe Montana to John Taylor game. Yep, that's and, a big uh, one. So yes, yeah, so I've seen some great ones. It's been great. It's All been right, great. now. Tell us, and, and i got to tell you, before we go much further in this, you know, I gave you your start I know in, you did. in radio and everything. I'm most proud of you as to what you've accomplished in life. you got a great wife, kids, a Thank whole you. nine yards. But, but one of the really cool things, you developed a relationship with Kevin Byrne, mm -hmm. uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and Kevin sort of has a lot to do with planning how the media will be handled out at the big game. Right. And tell, take it from there. Well, I started doing the press box PA, which is which is my actual job at the Super Bowl for the Ravens in 2002. Uh, that was the year after the second playoff season when the Ravens had that purge and they went seven and nine. So I started doing that. I guess I did an okay job. And at the end of that year, uh, Kevin comes up to me, or maybe it was the next year. He comes up to me at the end of the season and he goes, "Hey, how would you like to do the press box PA at the Super Bowl?" This was like before a Ravens game, maybe the last game of the year. So it was like two or three weeks before the Super Bowl. So it took me about as long as it took Sterling Moore to knock the pass out of Lee Evans' hands to say yes, <laughs> right? And then after I said yes, I said, what's involved, <laughs> you know? So he, so, he, so he told me, you know, you get a stipend, your family gets to go, you, right. know, you know, whatever it was. And so I did that, and um, they've asked me back every year. So this will be my eighth consecutive year. But Kevin is on the organizing committee for the game. And so he, I guess they went to him and they said, hey, we need a press box PA guy this year. Right. And so that's what happened. And eight consecutive years is, uh, it's astounding. Have you made any mistakes that you can really remember? Um, I mean, you misidentify players from time to time. Not because, you. Yeah, well, There's even Gary me. with his lovely wife, Julie, uh, there and they his are. son, Mark. Thank yep. you very much. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're human, obviously. Uh, but um, no major mistakes. But the one big hesitation that I had was back in, I guess it must have been 09, the Super Bowl in Tampa with uh, Pittsburgh and Arizona. Yep. The last second San Antonio Holmes catch. You know, it wasn't very apparent that it was a touchdown right away. Yep. In fact, the referee arms didn't go up for quite a while so everybody was being held in limbo and I didn't want to say anything because I only react when I see hands are up touchdown so that was the biggest hesitation I mean it was maybe 25 30 seconds before I think anybody realized yes touchdown it was all right now take us we are limited time take us through these uh these cushions over here. Well, I, I just are we going to get a shot of those? Uh, I think we can get it right there. Yeah, I just brought uh, some, uh, you know, things that you get at Super Bowls, which, you know, obviously that's not an easy place for people to get to. Th you know, these are just some of the things. Every seat at a Super Bowl has a seat cushion on it. Right. And they develop a new one with the logo for that particular Super Bowl every year. So this is just one from each of the seven Super Bowls that I've been at. The dates obviously come on down. And another little Pick one up. Pick like, one yeah. of those up. Let me, yeah. uh, this is from Super Bowl 40. I'm just going to, you know, hold, yep. hold it up right here. This is the one, this was the Super Bowl between the Steelers and the Seahawks, which by the way has a real interesting story to it. Because up where I am in the, in the booth, to my right is the president of Elias Sports Bureau, Steve Hurt. Yep. 
right. who is responsible for all the records. To my left is Mike, he was Mike Pereira, the director of officiating. Right. And Before he's responsible. He went to Fox, right? Correct. Okay. And he's responsible for giving the angles and all the replays to the referee on the field. Well, in this game, was that famous touchdown by Ben Roethlisberger at the goal line where the cl replays clearly showed that his knee touched the ground before, it, before the ball crossed the plane. And so Mike Pereira is sitting right there, a couple of seats from me, and they're showing the referee, but it's the referee's call. And when the referee decided, yeah, we're going to uphold the call and we're going to call a touchdown, you could tell that Mike was visibly upset by that because it's not Mike's call, it's the referee's call. But in Mike's judgment, it was a bad call. And I think as you saw the replays, we clearly saw that that was a bad call. So that's something that stands out as far as the Super Bowl memory is concerned. Now, you go out, the game is on the fifth on a Sunday. Right. When do you and your family go out there? We generally go out on the Thursday before. Okay. So this year we'll go out on the second. We'll come back on Monday the sixth. So we're there for four or five days. Um, and it's a great time. It's really a beautiful time. And you got a couple exciting things coming up in the next couple of years. Assuming you keep this gig, you go back to New Orleans for the first time since Hurricane Katrina. Correct. And then to New York City. Right. And then to Arizona after that. Yeah. Arizona will be 15. And then the Super Bowl 50, Super Bowl L, hasn't been announced yet. But the speculation has it that it's either going to be L.A. or London. Super Bowl London. L for London. So it'll be interesting to see how that happens. All right, yeah. Gary, continued success with that. Always a pleasure. And we'll have you on again sometime because we're running out of time. But Studio 83, your new venture, and we'll talk more about it. Thank you, Stan. All right, that's Gary Stein, a great local story. Before we go to break, let's take a look at our photo of the week. And the photo of the week is brought to you by Yingling Lager, true American classic. Taste the quality of the 180 years of family-owned and operated tradition. Brews into every single bottle. And no surprise, Sabina Moran took this picture of a disconsolate Billy Cundiff walking off the field after he missed a potential game-tying field goal at the end of the AFC Championship. You can see more of Sabina's pictures and read Joe Platania's Ravens report at PressBoxOnline.com. When we return, I'll be joined by my guys, Buzz Battaglia, Miles Goodman, and Tony Lombardi. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Go to PressBoxOnline.com and register a youth team in your community for a chance to be highlighted as the PressBox Youth Team of the Month, sponsored by Sports Authority. Go to PressBoxOnline.com for all the details. <laughs> 